Okay, hello everyone. All right, um, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, so I know it's been a while. Um, sorry about the delay. Uh, so I had a cough that lasted for a while. Um, also, I was working on some projects during the summer. Um, but I'm very excited to be back to finish these programs. Okay. All right. All right. So the next program in chapter seven is array operations. All right. So write a program with an array that is initialized with test data. Use any primitive data type of your choice. The program should also have the following methods. Get total. This method should accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the total of the values in the array. Get average is going to accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the average of the values in the array. Get highest is going to accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the highest value in the array. <clears throat> And then get lowest is going to accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the lowest value in the array. So demonstrate each of the methods in the program. All right, so let's start. I'm going to go ahead and create the class. So it's going to be a public class, and I'm going to call it the name of the question, which is array operations. And then I'll go ahead and I'll create the main method. So it's going to be public static void main. Anytime I, <clears throat> anytime I, um, it takes a while for me to come back. Um, I'm a bit rusty, so so please bear with me. But eventually, once I do a couple of these videos, I should be back on form, and I, I shouldn't be uh, rusty. I should, it should be better. Okay, so, all right. So let's see. So, <clears throat> so basically, we are we are writing um, four methods. Also, sorry about the cough. I had a cough that lasted for a while. I don't know where it came from, and I don't know why it lasted so long. But it's getting better. It's getting better now. So if you hear me coughing, um, bear with me. Bear with me with that too. All right. So we're going to create four methods. Um, we can go ahead and create our methods under the main method. But I like to create mine above the main method because it's a bit logical. You, you, if you create your methods below the main method, it will still work. But I, I like to create mine above it. All right. So the first method we're going to create is get total. It's going to accept a one-dimensional array as its argument, and return the total of the values in the array. OK, so I'm going to create a public method, public so that it's available to code outside of this class. It's going to be a static method because it, it's going to belong to this class and not a, a particular object. All right, now we need to give it a name. The name of the method is getTotal. So I'm going to call it getTotal. Oops, oops. Um, we need to specify the return type, I'm sorry. We need to specify the return type before we give it a name. All right, so it says the method should accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the total of the values. So over here, it also mentioned that we can use any primitive data type as our choice. <coughs> sorry, so I'm going to use a double array. Um, we're going to pass in double arrays to these methods. And so if, if we have an array that contains double, and then we calculate the total, then the total is also going to be a double. So we need to return the total. So if you're going to return the total, which is going to be a double, then the return type is going to be a double. So it's going to be a public static double method, and I'm going to call it get total. Okay. Okay, now we need to specify any parameters, if any. Over here it says, this method should accept a one-dimensional array as its argument. That means that this method over here is going to accept a one-dimensional array. So we need to define um, a, the parameter as a one-dimensional array. So we said we're going to pass in double arrays. So I'm going to define uh, this, part, this method in such, that, such a way that it's going to accept a double uh, one-dimensional array. So it's going to be a double array. And I'm going to call it numbers, right? Because it's going to be an array that's going to contain numbers, in this case, uh, doubles. All right. So this method should accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the total of the values in the array. So we assume that this contains something when, when it's being passed to this method. All right. What we have to do is go through each element in the array and, and then add them all up in order, in order to get our total. So I'm going to declare a variable which is going to be called total, and I'm going to set it to, to zero. So it's going to be double 
total is going to be equal to zero. Initially, total is zero. We're going to use total as an accumulator to add up all the numbers in the array that's passed to this method. All right, so I'm going to create a loop, a for loop for that. And I'll explain that in a second. Let me go ahead and create the method of the, of the sorry, the header of the, met, of, the, of the loop. All right. So before I do that, um, let me go ahead and use a comment to explain a few things. So assume we have an, assuming you know, an array like this, 7.8, 4.7, 2.334, um, and then 5. Assuming an array like this is passed to this method. <clears throat> All right, so when we are counting the elements in the array, we count it this way. So this is number one. This is the first, second, third, and fourth item, right? So an array of four items. <clears throat> but if you wanted to access or identify each of these elements, we use what's called an index. And, uh, and, the, f uh, and the index of this array, the, uh, the index starts from zero, basically. The first element of this array has an index of zero. So that's how we identify the first element. The second element has an index of one, right? So when we are counting, it's one, two, three, four elements. But when we are accessing these elements, we use their index um, or, uh, or their indices. Um, or the indices, basically. So the first element has an index of zero, second has an index of one, third has an index of two, and then the last one has an index of three. So even though we have four elements, the last element, the fourth element, has an index of three. And that's something, and that brings something very important about arrays. The index of the last element is always one less than the length of the array. So the length of the array is four, which means we have four elements in the array. But the index of the fourth element is three, one less than the length of the array, which is four. Okay? All right. So as long as the index, okay, in an array like this, in an, in an array of four elements, as long as the index is less than four, that index is a valid index. We can use that index to basically identify uh, an element in this array, right? All right, so the, ind the, the indices of the, of the array will always be less, okay? It, it will never be equal to the length of the array. It will always be less than the length of the, the, length of the array. And that's how we kind of check to see if um, this index is, uh, you know, can identify an element in the array, all right? So, so this is just, by the way, just to kind of um, give you an idea how this loop is going to work. For, for those who have never worked with uh, loops that you know, go through the element um, in an array. <coughs> So I'm going to create um, an integer variable. I'm going to call it current. I'm going to call it current numbers index. Um, th it doesn't sound right. Uh, let me see. So numbers, current numbers index. I'm going to call this current numbers in index, and I'm going to set it to zero. And so this current numbers index is going to be used as an index to identify at any t any point in time an element in the array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check as long as current numbers index is less than the length of the array. Now, every array has a public field called length, and that contains how many elements are in that array. And the way I access it is by using the dot operator and accessing the, the, pub, the public field called length. So numbers.length. So this basically reads uh, we initialize current numbers index to zero as long as the current numbers index is less than the length of the array, right? If the index is less than the length of the array, that is a valid index, and we can use that index to identify an element in the array. With the example I gave, I, I wish I didn't delete it. Um, I'll try to bring it back really quickly here. All right, and then I'll make a copy of this. And then I'll undo. Okay. I'll paste it back here. Okay. <clears throat> So with the example I gave, if at any point in time the index is uh, less than the length of the array, that index can be used to identify an element in the array. If, if we pick an index of, let's say, 3. All right, 3 is less than the length of the array. So that means we can use that 3 to identify an element of an array. In this case, this has an index of 0, this has an index of 1, this has an index of 2, and this has an index of 3. So in that case, by using 3, we can identify the number 5. Okay. So we are checking to see if that basically current numbers index, which is going to be used to access an element in the array, 
you know, is basically less than the, the length of the array. And at any point in time, we are going to use that index to identify or, or access an element in the array. Once we are done, we are going to add one, one to that um, value. And then we are going to repeat, repeat the process. We're going to use that index to access an element in the array and increase it again. So the very first time, current numbers index is zero. Zero, we use zero to access the first element in the array, which has an index of zero. And then um, we increase it to one. But each time or each time in the way we are checking to see if the index, okay, is less than uh, the length of the array. If it's less than the length of the array, that's a valid index. So we use it and we increase the current numbers index by one. And we repeat the process. So by doing this, basically, we are accessing each element in the array, and we, we, are, we can use it. So I hope it makes sense. I like to explain this once, at least in a program, um, <clears throat> so that you know, going forward, um, I will just use it. But I, I like to explain it once so it makes sense. <clears throat> All right, so the very first time we're accessing the first element, what, I'm, what I want to do is we want to take whatever is stored in total, OK? Okay, so total is going to be equal to whatever is stored in total, okay, plus that particular element. And the way we access that particular element is by calling the name of the array, numbers, and then the particular index, which is current numbers index. Very the very first time current numbers index is going to be zero, so we're accessing the first element. We're taking the first number, which is 7.8, we are adding it to what's already stored in total, which is zero, so zero plus 7.8 and then we are taking the result of that and storing it in total the second time let me put my semicolon here then. so the second time current numbers index is going to be increased by one so current numbers index is going to be one we are checking to see if one is less than four in this case and it's true because one is less than four we can use that one to access an element in the array and then total will contain 7.8 we take what's already stored in total, 7.8, plus we are trying to access, um, trying to access uh, an element in the array with index 1. So this is index 0, this is index 1. So we are trying to access this, ele this element here. So we are taking what's already stored in total, plus 4.7, okay, this particular element. We are adding it to total, and then we are putting the results of this uh, in total. By doing this, we are basically accumulating. We are basically adding all the numbers up. In total and when we are done by the time this loop runs or, the, or this loop finishes um, iterating we will have the value or basically or the sum of all the numbers in, in total once we are done we want to return total so I know I took a while uh, explaining this but every time I do this I just want it to be clear um, so going forward we'll use this loop again but um, because you understand it, we'll just we'll just go ahead and use it I'll remove this example here all right so total is zero. We add all the numbers in the array. We return total. So by doing this, we are done. We get the total. All right. The next method is going to be get average. So let's define it. Uh, this method should accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the average of the values in the array. All right. It's also going to be a public static method. It's, it's going to return the average. All right, so if it contains, if our array is going to contain doubles, our, our average most likely is going to be a double. So, public, uh, so the return type is going to be a double as well. So public static double, and then we're going to call this get average. All right, so now we need to specify the, um, any parameters. Of course, it's going to take in a one-dimensional array. Okay, it says this method should accept a one-dimensional array. So it's going to be something, it's, it's basically the same as this, right? It's going to be a, accept a double array called numbers. 